Hi everyone, it's Lorelai with another RPG Maker with tutorial. Today we will be making our first area for our game. The first thing we're going to do is create a new map. So I'm going to hold down ZL for the sub menu and then I'm going to push R over to open the map list. To make the map that we're going to start our first cutscene, we're going to go to ZL, the sub menu, and then select either create new map or load sample map. And for this tutorial, we are going to be using just a sample map just to save on some time. Now our first map, I want to be in a castle. Again, a very short and sweet story. We get a quest from the king and then go to our dungeon. So we're gonna start right where the action starts inside one of these castles. Now we've got the first floor castle, the second floor or dungeon part of the castle, and then the third floor of the castle. I'm gonna go ahead and click this third floor because it has a throne where our king can sit. And you can see that it was added underneath our map 001. That is okay with me, but if you wanted to move it, you can go back to the sub menu and click move and then you'll be able to change its parent. So I'll move it under the King's Crystal. Press A to load this map. Here you can see such a beautiful map already created for us, very nicely done. And here you're free to make any changes that you wanna make as well. For the sake of our game, I actually want to simplify this map by quite a bit. Our game is from point A to point B, and we're not gonna have any reason for the player to explore this map. And I think it's good game design not to have any extraneous places, unless it's part of the story, or telling a story, or part of something important. And in our game, there's really no reason for any of this. So I'm gonna go to the sub menu, and I'm going to click copy. And I'm just gonna copy this dark background and just fill in where I don't want anything uh, to be for now. I'm getting rid of all the extra places in this map. It'd be much easier if I used perhaps the rectangle tool. And then I'm gonna change the size of the map to get rid of everything here that's at the bottom, starting from this cell. If you look at the top bar, you'll see castle 3F and then the coordinates 1925. That means where we're highlighted right now is on X19 and Y25. So I wanna make sure that the map does not exceed 25 cells. It will go ahead and remove everything here that's at the bottom. So to do that, I'm gonna go to the sub menu and edit map information and change the height to 25 and press OK. Great, now we just have the important part of our map and nothing else. I'm also gonna go ahead and remove all of these events on the outside of the, of the map. You'll see that this map comes with a ton of other events. There are events to make the waterfalls, there are events to make these torches, and these don't actually need to even do anything. All they are functioning as is the graphic with the image as a step animation. So what it's doing is it's cycling between these three images to make a short three frame animation that they call a step animation. Other than that, there are no other events on this map for our story, and that's what we have to do next. I'm going to put the king in his throne. So to do that, I'm gonna put my cursor right on top of where I think the king can sit, and I'm gonna press A. And we can go ahead and name this if we want, and that might make it easier to distinguish it between all the other events that are on the map right now. So I'm just gonna type in king. As for the image, we're gonna try to find a character that looks kingly, I suppose. Under sub character three, I find the perfect guy right here. And I'm gonna keep all these options as they are. Under auto movement, we're gonna keep it fixed. He's not gonna be moving from his throne. Priority is same as character. He's on the same layer as us. And for the, the trigger, we're gonna keep as action button. Event details and conditions, we will change later. So let's press okay. And there's our king. Now let's add the starting position of our character. Let's say he starts right here in the foyer. We're gonna say set start position of the player. Now when we press play, we'll be able to walk around the castle and see our king. Okay, looks good. When we click the king, nothing happens because he actually doesn't have any event details on him right now. So let's press plus and go back to the editor. And we're going to start the cutscene where the player talks to the king and gets the quest 
to start the story. And there's a few ways that we can do that. And once you figure out events, you'll be able to get really creative in how you want to achieve your first beginning cutscene. For this beginning cutscene, we're actually going to have two different events. The first event is going to be a sort of introduction to the character and the reason for why we're actually here. And then the second event is going to activate when the character is close to the king and he'll give his little exposition dump and then the quest. Where you put this first event is up to you, but I like placing it close to where this event starts. So I'm going to press A. I'm going to call this event cut one, as in cut scene one. There's going to be no image, no movement, no priority, I'm setting the trigger to auto run. And this means it's going to start immediately upon either entering the map or playing that game. So for the event details, we can write our beginning narrative. So let's go to show text, no face, and then the text can be, our hero Kale finds himself summoned by the king. And we'll make the background dim and the window position in the middle. Press OK. Then we'll make another text that says, after days of travel, he has finally reached the castle. And just like before, we're going to say dim and middle. Then we can add a quick little tutorial text saying, use the right joystick to move, press X for the menu, press A to interact. This probably isn't super important to add because all of the RPG Maker with titles that other people are making, they're all going to have kind of the same control structure. But it's kind of a best practice when you're making a cutscene or the beginning of your game. So now when the game starts, we will see our hero Kale finds himself summoned by the king. After days of travel, he's finally reached the castle. Use the right joystick to move, press X for the menu, press A to interact. This event is going to auto run. It's going to fire off immediately upon entering the map. And when it's done with these events, it's actually going to keep firing itself until we tell it to stop. There are two ways we can make this stop. Well, probably more than two, but two basic ways to make it stop. And the first one is to go to under character. You could say erase event. That would stop the event from firing again and again. But this won't work for our cutscene because if the player ever wants to enter the castle again, it will auto fire again. And there's no reason for this to fire off more than once. So a race event would work if you wanted this auto run ability to run every time you enter the map, but then stop auto firing. But in our case, we want it to run once and then never again, even when entering the map a second time. So to make it stop this way, we are going to go to game progress and then self switch control. We're going to turn self switch A to on. And switches are a sort of on off zero one true false sort of control that we have over our events. There's regular switches which can be used throughout the entire game. And then there are self switches that are used just for this one event. So we're going to turn self switch A to on. So something is true. A is true. Press OK. And now we're going to make a new event page. We're going to add event page. And this is going to be a completely empty event with the condition of self switch A being on. So once we finish this narration and we turn on our self switch, the condition for event page, which is self switch A is on, will fire off, but it's completely empty, so it's actually not even going to do anything. So let's press OK and then see how this works. Let's press play. And immediately we see the text. Our hero Kale finds himself summoned by the king. After days of travel, he has finally reached the castle. Use the right joystick to move, press X for the menu, press A to interact. And now we are free to walk around. There are ways of making that look a little bit better. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Here's what I like to do. Let's make a new map. And it's going to be a completely blank map, nothing in it. Doesn't matter what tile set it is, we're not even going to be looking at this map. I should rename it. And we're going to call it Initialize. And we're going to go ahead and move it to the top. So let's open Initialize. We're going to set our character to this blank map, the starting position of our character, that is. 
Then we're gonna add an event. Again, it doesn't matter where. We're gonna call it transfer. No image, no movement, no priority. The trigger is going to be auto run. And under event details, we're gonna go down to move and then transfer player to location, castle, and then we're gonna set where we want our character to go, which will be, let's say, down here. We want the direction to be up, like he's walking up, and then the fade to be black, that's okay. And then press okay. What I also wanna do is right at the beginning is go to fade out screen. So what this event does is it auto runs, it fades out the screen and then transfers the player to the castle. And then there's one more thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the database and then I'm gonna go all the way down to system, down to options and then select start transparent. So now when we start up our game, we're not actually going to see our starting party. He's going to be completely transparent. Let's go back to our castle. Go to our event down here, event details, and then maybe between these two text boxes, we're going to go down to screen and then fade in screen. We're gonna need to make our character no longer transparent. And to do that, we go to move, set movement root, edit root, then use the right bumper to go all the way to the end. And we want to select transparent off. So our character starts in transparent, but then when they are transferred to the castle, that transparency turns off. And that just makes it look a little bit more cleaner when we do that switch from the beginning map to the castle map. So let's press OK. And see how this looks in our game. So our game started completely black. We didn't see our character because he was transparent and we are transferred to the castle where this introduction narration kind of starts. Our hero Kale finds himself summoned by the king. After days of travel, he's finally reached the castle. We fade in, we see our character who is no longer transparent and he is facing upward. And now we are free to move around. So that is just the first part of our cutscene. In the next video, we'll make part two of the cutscene. If you liked this video, please consider liking and subscribing for more RPG Maker videos. I'll see you in the next one.